So let us continue from where we stopped. And because I have shut down my system, so my server has stopped running. So I just need to run that again by using our npm run start dev. Now this is just me simply running this script that we set up in the first video. So when I run that, that should start up our dev server. And then I'll open up my browser and I'll just type localhost 5000. Okay, so we are going to be working on the new blog or new blog post route. So the one we click on this, it opens up that blog route and we've set it up in blogs slash new. Okay, so let's just link up this button to take us to blog slash new. So I'll just copy this from here and uh, we'll look for that button. Just index of JX. This is the href. So I just paste that there. If I just head back and refresh, when we click on it, it takes us here. So in here, we're going to create our form, which is going to have a title, author, description, and other things. So let's just go ahead and do that. So in my views folder, I'll create a new view. I'll just call it new.ejx. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just put in some boilerplate code of HTML. I just change the title to say new blog post. I'll just save. And uh, in here, let me just put a H1. It says new blog post. I'll just give it um, a class and give it some margin at the bottom. Because we're using Bootstrap, I'll go to our index file. I just copy that Bootstrap link and my CSS file that uh, I used to make it like dark mode. I just copy, I think, all these links. I'm gonna need them. Just copy all of them. Go to my new.ejx and paste that there. I'll save now. Let's go to uh, blogs router and this slash new router. Uh, instead of it saying this is the blog's router for new post, I wanted to render that new .ejs file we created. So I'll just remove everything there and put render. And then what we're trying to render is the file new ejs. Okay, I just saved this. And then let's head back to our browser and refresh. So that will show us that um, new ejx that we just created so i'll just uh go ahead and make this look better so i just create a div container so that we have uh some kind of like margin on the right and left i'll make the text to be white of so this let just see what that looks like okay that's better and i'll go ahead and add my form so my form, the action, I'm just going to leave the action. We're going to get back to that method is going to be post. And in here, we're going to add our fields. Okay. So I just create a div, I call it form group. In there, I have my label. Label is going to be for title. Let's have title there. I think I also need to make this text white because it won't be visible. Uh, let me give the label class text white. Okay, and then input, uh, give it a class of form control. Now this is just a default class of bootstrap. Type of text, add some placeholder of title and uh, give it a name of title if i save go back to our browser and i'll refresh so we have this input here so we need to add that of author and uh, our description so just copy this again paste that change all the titles to author Let's see if i can just quickly do that ctrl d ctrl d ctrl d auto just make this small letter a and make also this small letter a so we have um 
our auto I'll copy and paste this I'm gonna do the last one for the description uh, okay make the label to be description for description now our description is not going to be an input type of text is going to be a text area so the text area I'll give it a name of description uh, I don't need the ID I also don't need the columns and I'm gonna add a placeholder and say description uh, and give it a class of form control okay so that should fix good that should fix that so that's the default class of bootstrap so there's something I wanted to point out you see this placeholder here uh, in case if yours is not visible now I notice that when you uh, when your closing tag of your text area is on a new line, like I said, I hit enter here and I refresh this. You see the, um, the placeholder is gone. It's not visible. So you want to, if you want to show a placeholder in your text area, uh, kind of like make sure that the closing tag of the text area is on the same line. So that way it's visible as you can see here okay so what I'm gonna add next is the buttons so let me just make a div from group in there I have my buttons there's a button oh, type of submit and then the class uh, just a btn btn primary and then in there I'll just have save then also add an anchor tag. I'm using an anchor tag is so that it just takes us back to the index page. So my href just gonna be the forward slash and then I'll just say cancel. And I'll add a class of BTN, BTN, let's say warning. Let's save and see what we have. So when we click on this, it takes us back here. And we'll click on new, it brings us back here good so now let's focus on getting this to uh post it to in the database so now let's focus on getting our blog post to be saved in the database so what we're going to do now is that we're going to just head over to our code and then for the routes that handles the form that's in the action part i'm just going to put slash blocks and the reason for that is that I want the the kind of like the index of the blogs route to handle the form. So I'll go to my blogs route route that handles new post. So this route is just going to be router dot. It's going to be a post, and then it's just going to be a, a slash forward slash this way. And then I'll also pass my request and response parameters and it's inside a callback, all inside the callback function. Okay, so this is what we're gonna handle when the user submits a form. Okay, so let's make a connection to our database. So just head back to server.js and then we are going to import mongoose because that's what we're using so i'm going to bring in mongoose let's just bring it in here say bring in mongoose and uh, just say const mongoose equal to require mongoose so that brings in the mongoose for us and the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to connect to the database so just after I've called in my express, I'll just say connect to to mongoose. Okay, so you just call the mongoose const and say connect, and then pass in the link, which is just going to be mongoose db slash slash localhost, and then 
slash the name of the database so i'll just call it crude blog now if this database doesn't uh, exist already it's going to be automatically created when you want to post in a new value okay so uh, let's save and let's see what we have so we have some deprecation warnings uh okay so we need to just check our console and see what the warning is telling us so you say we should use the new parser so we're going to pass this to our mongo client so just copy all of this here and where i have my mongo to connect i'm going to pass in these parameters so that we can get rid of that warning and uh, there's also another warning here that says use unified topology true just also copy that paste that here and you can see that deprecation warning is gone so these deprecation warnings are just simply let you know that uh, probably in the future uh, some things will not be the way they are so you just uh, when you see them try and fix them as much as you can because uh, when you're watching this video there could be other deprecation warnings so just try and make the fix that uh, they recommend so we do not have any problem that means we've connected successfully to our database now for us to be able to send in files from our form or is it this guy here we're going to be using like a model uh i've already created a folder for that uh, so just go ahead and create a folder and in that models folder i'm going to create a model called blog okay so the model is going to act like a structure for what kind of data i want to uh, put in the database so we're going to define like our schema here and the blog is also going to be in charge of sorry the model is going to be in charge of uh interacting directly to the database okay so in here i'll just go ahead and create a schema for our blog now if you go back to our form let's have a look at our form we have a title we have author description so that means we're going to need this information okay to even insert in our database so what i'm going to do is first of all i'm going to still bring in oops small letters still bring in my mongoose mongoose just require that and then I'll create a schema, let's call it blog schema, and I'll say that is equal to new mongoose.schema. And like we said before, that schema is just simply our structure in our data. So in there, I'm going to pass in a structure of how the data that we're putting inside the database should be. So I know I'm going to need a title. Okay and we need to define the type of uh, data that title is going to be so in the title we say the type is string the other several things you could define uh, we're also going to define if it's going to be required we want that every blog post should have a title another thing we're also going to need is the author who is making this post and the type of that data is also going to be string and i also want that um, that the person must fill up an author because we need that so make required true wait let me just make this look uh, just make it look nicer okay then another thing we're going to need is the description I can decide not to make this uh, required but then of course it should be required but I'm just going to leave it uh, then the next thing we're going to need is the time it was created time created the time the post was created so that we can display let me go back to our index so that we kind of like can display the dates or play around with the time that post was uh, created okay so just head back and uh, the type of data is date and since we're not the one putting that just gonna give it a default value 
and in our default value we can pass function so i'll just pass an arrow function here and all it does is just causing the current date so whatever the current date is that's going to be what's going to be uh inserted into this time created uh data now subsequently i'm going to add images so just create a data for that i already collection for that and uh, in the i'm only going to save the name so the the type of data is going to be string and uh, just make it required false actually you don't need to do that you can just say default so just in case the person doesn't fill in uh something doesn't like upload an image i just put this default string here placeholder.jpg uh, what i'm going to do is subsequently if someone doesn't have an image or a post doesn't have an image uh, we're going to use this display like a default image okay i'm just going to leave it at that the other things we're going to add later but we're going to get back to that so what i'm going to do is i need to i need to export this schema so that i can use it uh anywhere i want so i just say module that exports and then what i want to export is the the mongoose dot model okay and then i need to give it a name so i just leave it as blog and then what am i actually exporting which is the blog schema that we have right here so i can require this file anyway i want to use the blocks uh the blog model and then i can make reference to this blog schema by using this name right here and where we're going to need that is uh we're going to need it in our blogs route i'm back on our blogs route now anytime we make a new post we need to make reference to that blog model we created so in our blogs route i'm going to import that uh what's this response uh, this is not needed i'm going to import that blogs blog model model sorry so i just const and just say blog and say require uh put a dot slash dot dot slash so i can just go back on folder choose models and then blog so we're importing that blog and we're going to be using it when we're making a new post okay so now in our post routes let me just do that here i'm going to select blog equal to a new blog okay so you see i make a reference to that model so i'm creating a new blog and in the new blog we need to pass some parameters to it because as you can see it needs some things here to be able to uh, form a schema so uh, we need to get reference to whatever we put in in uh, our form and we can do that by saying making reference to the request body so you can just say it's something like uh title oops title and say request oops sorry request body dot title so this will make reference to the request body now because i saved i'm having some errors undefined let me see dates now okay so that is in our blog okay this shouldn't be here uh where are they blog routes okay now uh we need to use express body parser now uh, i think on all the versions of express you need to like install something they call body parser but uh with uh versions from four point something and above uh you, you don't need to do that anymore so i think express now has their own uh body parser so we're just going to uh include that i'll just make this look neater here so we're gonna call in or we're gonna say app.use 
and uh, we're gonna say express dot URL encoded and then we're gonna pass in extended false so with this we can okay we can get our request body so I'll head back to my routes okay actually what I'm gonna do is that when we send um, I'm just gonna console log the body uh, let me say console log request body so when we send just gonna comment this out when we send our post we can see something in the console log so let's head back to our website click on create a new a blog let me just make this look smaller so that we can see the console so i just fill in some random stuff and hit save so you can see in the console we have a title which is what we typed uh, we have the author and then we have description I'm actually going to type something meaningful title one and say author is some t some t codes and say this is a description and then I hit and save now you can see of course it's still loading because it doesn't the routes we've not created a route but you can see that we have the the object of the request body in here we have the title the auto description so we can send that to the model and save that to our database okay so i just we don't need this console log anymore i'll comment this so our title will be the request body title our auto is going to be request body auto and then our description is going to be request body description okay so that should make up uh the things we need to send in from our own end uh, the other things are going to be populated uh automatically like the the time creator will be populated the image will be populated because they have default value so what we need to do just send in this three for now so after creating that new blog model we need to do like a try and catch so we're going to try to save that and in my catch i'm just going to say console log the error so that we can just see if there's any error that comes from there and in my try i'm going to say blog equal to blog save so i'm just updating what this uh, variable is and then uh is going to be called to block the save and what that's going to do is when this saves it's going to give us an id it's going to return an id to this uh an id property to this blog so we can say when it saves i'm actually just going to console log that console log blog id okay so we can see what that is and i'm going to make this an async function because uh, um, it might take a while to um, send even if it's a millisecond so I'll just make this on a sync and I'll make the blog dot save I'll, I'll wait for that okay so let us try let us okay I think we already have an ID here because this form was was loading so I'll just create a new one I say title 2 Auto is number two. Auto it's number two. And I say this is description description two. When I hit save, you can see a new ID here. Now this is uh, how Mongoose automatically creates IDs. And if I open up my compass so that you can see that database. So I have my compass, it's just a GUI for us to see our database. I'm just disconnect so when i click on connect you see that crude blog has been created okay and then when i open that uh, i should be able to see those two id so you can see the first one which is the ab if you look at the console it's right here and the second one that had ac at the end is right there 
okay so we can see our data is being inserted so the image is default value of placeholder.jpg and we have our title description then we also have the time it created so we can see that works just fine of course it's possible that uh, someone doesn't feel the author let me just remove the author so that should give us some error you can see in the console that auto is required okay because auto is required so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to in the new ejx just make add required to all of this oops let me just add required so that by default the person will have to fill in something okay so if i refresh this it says required of course we have to put in stuff so that uh we can mitigate this error so the next thing i'm going to do is uh, that when we successfully submit this it should take us to a new route so let's head back to our blogs route so where we have this try and say we'll just console log this blog id we don't need to console log it what we're going to say is we're going to redirect by using response that redirect and what we want to redirect to for now let me just say blogs slash uh i'm going to add the id i'm going to tack on the id as a parameter in that url so it's going to take us to blogs then a slash some id and uh, how we'll do that we'll just say blog the id so it's going to take us to this route which is going to be blog slash id so let us create the route that it's going to be so on top of here i'll say router the get and as for the route i just put a slash i'll put a column id because this is a parameter here is a parameter so it's going to be passed as a parameter and then of course we'll have a callback function that has response and sorry request and response and what we're just going to do is uh, let's just see response that send just want to send what that parameter is and how we can get it by using request.params and then id so when we save a blog post it's going to take us to this route and it just display the id on the page so let's just see how that works uh just create some random stuff good so you can see that id on the page so eventually what we're going to do is that we're going to have another uh, ejx that displays the information of that using the id so we're going to implement that in the next video